So you've watched all the videos online and you want to get into the vending industry, but you're just not sure what type of machine to get. Stay tuned, we'll go through them all right now. You've decided to make the first step into the vending business. Congratulations, but now what? What type of machine should I use? Well, let's delve into all the different types of machines that are available and you can choose what's best for you. So the first type of vending machine that we'll discuss is the bulk vending machine. Now, these are cheaper. A lot of people get these to, you know, test the waters, get their feet wet. But bulk vending machines are the smaller vending machines that offer candy, bulk candy like nuts, mints, gumballs, or some stickers or toy novelties, etc. Usually costs about 25 uh, cents or 50 cents per vend. These bulk candy vending machines are great in high traffic locations and are low cost for startup. So it's a great option to get your feet wet, try the industry, but in my opinion, to get your uh, return on investment, ROI, you'll need a lot of locations going this route because it's 25 cents per vent. So it's one thing to consider if you're thinking about bulk vending. So if bulk vending is not your thing, <clears throat> you can always go into full line vending. Now, the first thing that comes to mind with most people when you say a vending machine is a pot machine or a soda machine. Now, these machines are great for high traffic areas like office buildings, uh, factories, any place that has high traffic. Now, personally, I don't have any machines outside. I don't want to deal with vandalism. If it's inside, the, 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 the businesses will you know, typically take more care of it. And especially now with COVID, you know, when, they're, when they have to sanitize in the lunchroom, um, they usually sanitize the machine too. Now I will, you know, if I see someone doing it when I go in to service it, I'll say, hey, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. What do you want? Pop, snack, whatever. And that's, they're, they're cleaning your machine for you to keep it um, uh, compliant with the COVID uh, regulations nowadays. So the few different options they have for, for pop machines, soda machines, is do you go straight cans? Do you go cans and bottles? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or straight bottles? Personally, I go cans for a couple different reasons. Um, you can fit more in the machine so you don't have to go there as often so you're saving money. And um, I feel that you can make more money on the cans than you do the bottles. So that's the reason why I strictly do cans. But like I said, you can do cans or some machines, you can do cans and bottles or strictly bottles. It's up to you, but you have to do your homework. Look into it. The price ranges from a few hundred dollars up to, you know, $10,000. And yes, there are machines out there at that price. You know, they have digital screens. They track all your inventory. It's great, but you got to pay the price if you want those type of machines. If you're just getting into it, you know, get something from a, a reputable, um, uh, company that refurbishes so you know that um, they've gone through it all they've tested everything everything works uh, if you just buy it off of Craigslist or offer up or Kijiji whatever you don't know what the issues are with that machine because most people just want to sell it get rid of it and you know people tend to lie it worked, worked fine when I had it I don't know what happened to it I don't know so do your homework and find a reputable um, company that sells it and because you know you can ask the questions and um, they'll be refurbished they'll go through it all clean it make sure all the motors work make sure the compressors good and it'll be ready to go once you're ready to purchase a machine so do your homework it'll help you in the long run now going right along with the the full pot machine is a snack machine now, these are great for uh, businesses. Personally, for me, 75 or more, you wanna go a full snack, a full pop, or you can go combo machines, which we'll get into shortly. But with the snack machines, you can do 
a wide variety of options. Chips, chocolate bars, gums, candy, um, you name it, healthier snacks. You know, some of my places, they, they requested healthy snacks. So we'll do like pretzels or, you know, flavored popcorn, that kind of stuff, or healthy um, uh, granola bars, that kind of thing. So the options are endless when it comes to um, uh, snack machine options. And it works great too because, you know, if they want a little pick-me-up halfway through the day, they can grab a snack or a chocolate bar just to give them a little bit of a boost to get them through the rest of the day. But again, just like the pot machine, you know, there are different types of machines that you can get. There's, there's four wides, five wides, um, and the different options are out there. So you, again, you got to do your homework, you know, find a reputable company that, um, that'll service it because now when you're getting into the, the full, um, snack machines for every snack, there's components for each product. There's a motor that spins, that spins the coil for every product. So that's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. So if you're buying off, you know, someone online, make sure you test it. Tell them to, you know, plug it in. Do your tests on all your motors. Make sure everything spins properly. Make sure you can change the price. The coin mech, if they have bill readers, is it updated? Will it accept new bills? Here in Canada, we have the new plastic money. So a lot of the older machines that you get online, <clears throat> they won't accept those bills. So you have to keep that in mind. Also, we have... We don't have the dollar bills anymore, or two dollar bills anymore. We have dollar coins, the the loony, and two dollar coins, the toony. So will will the machine accept it? Will the coin mech accept it? Um, and so it, you also got to think that because we don't have one dollar bills and two dollar bills, the next one up is a five dollar bill. So um, when you're um, when they put a five dollar bill in, they get a a, a one dollar pop. That's four dollars change. So if your coin mech does loonies and toonies, great. But if it doesn't, that's a lot of quarters that they're going to go through. So these are the things you got to keep in mind when you're purchasing a snack machine to look into uh, if it's online or if it's at a, a company that refurbishes and sells the machine. So again, do your homework. You have to know what you want before you buy it. Don't just fly off the handle and buy machines. Say, oh, I'm in the business now. There's so many things you got to look into before you choose a machine. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Now, the next type of vending machine that you can consider is a, a coffee vending machine. Now, these are great for offices, um, uh, convention, business to business, a lot of places where um, people go for meetings, that kind of stuff. But the only issue with these types of machines is you have to have a water line. Now, these are harder to convince locations to because they have to put a water line in there. Um, you have to fill up different powders um, for the for the coffee or the the hot chocolate, the teas, that kind of stuff, and you have to have cups. So these are other things that you have to keep in mind if you're thinking about a coffee machine. I don't have any personally. Uh, I have dealt with them before uh, in restaurants, the, the countertop ones, and they can get pretty messy. If you're pouring in the powders and they spill, all that stuff can get all of a machine and gum it up. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to deter anybody, but these are the things you got to think of if you're considering a coffee machine. So coffee machines are good in, in winter time, but what about, <clears throat> excuse me, but what about during the summer. You know, not a lot of people want to have coffee in the middle of summer, unless it's like a, a, a business or a conference room. <clears throat> but again, there's a lot more involved in having a coffee vending machine. You know, cups, you gotta provide lids. You know, are you gonna have stir sticks? Um, you know, some people have the Keurig machines. <clears throat> some people have the Keurig machines and they vend the little cups, the, the, the K cups out of the machine, as well as the cups out of the machine. So there's a couple different options for if you wanna do coffee. Um, you know, provide the machine, have it sitting there, because it's a lot easier, they can just pour water into the machine, um, but then sell the sell the um, 
the K-cups in the machine. For example, if you're selling it for, if you regularly sell a coffee for a dollar, sell the, sell the K-cups for 75 cents, put the, the lid and the cup for 25 cents with a stir stick inside. Don't keep them out because people will, if they just want a glass of water, they'll take your cup and go grab a glass of water and you're losing money. So I've seen this um, a lot online where they'll, they'll drop the price of the coffee but add the cup in the machine too. So you get your cup, your K-cup and your, and your drink beverage cup. <clears throat> and there are shims um, that can raise it up in, in the, uh, so you can put the K-cup so it's not just falls through the hole, the coil there. So, but look into it. Um, it is an option. Um, <clears throat> rather than getting a coffee machine, because it's it can get very messy and I do have experience with those it can get very messy because you got to cut the bag pour it in if you if it spills out the the, the, the puff of, of the, the of the of the the ingredients can get everywhere and do that over a long period of time it gets everywhere then you gotta clean the components clean this that everything gets sticky so in my personal opinion I would stay I stay away from the full coffee machines um, I would pr rather do a, a Keurig type of machine and then sell the K-Cups out of your snack machine because you already have a snack machine there. So anyways, that's my opinion. But if you're deciding to do a coffee machine, do your homework and, you know, talk to people that have been doing it. Ask all the questions because it's a lot more involved than your typical pot machine or your snack machine. One thing to think of. Another type of vending machine that you could choose, depending on where you live in the world, if it's hot all year round, it might be a good option, is the frozen food vending machines. Ice creams, dinners, that kind of stuff. But for me here in Canada, it's it's not really an option unless you have a hotel um, with, and, and they, I would have to have a backup generator for the machine to keep the power going constantly. Because if you lose power and you have ice cream and it melts, you're done. You lose all that product. So you have to keep in mind, um, you know, if you're going to be choosing a, a frozen product machine, you know, is there backup power if the power does go out? Who knows how long the power is going to be out for? You know, in the States, they do rolling blackouts. And, you know, it's, um, it's something that uh, you have to consider uh, if you're going to choose frozen food vending so think about it you know do your homework do your research um, because it is a good it is a good seller if you're in the warmer climates down south but up here in Canada I I, I haven't seen any vending machines that sell you know ice cream other than the convenience stores and stuff like that so I, I wouldn't choose it myself personally but if it's something you want to look into you know it could be a good money maker but, but keep that in mind if you lose power possibility of losing all your product could happen the next option for vending machines is hot food vending now this this is more of a new thing that's coming out and these machines are super expensive but machines that will do french fries or hamburgers or pizzas that kind of stuff now but these machines are super super expensive um, I'm sure you've watched videos online of um, vending machines in Japan where they have a vending machine for every 23 people and it's insane. There's vending machines all over the place. So markets like that, yeah, it's wide open. You know, whatever's new, do it. But for here in North America, do you want to trust a, a vending machine for pizza? Mm, I don't know because you have to think about it. You have your doughs, which are probably gonna be frozen doughs. You have your sauce, your toppings, your cheese. So there's a lot of things you have to consider. But the other type of machine that is kind of in that niche for, for producing hot food would be a, a fresh food with the option of providing like a microwave. Now this is good for like a hospital or a large factory with a few hundred people because you can also add pop and chips to those machines to fill it up because they have a lot of options the ones where you put the coins in you slide the door open you grab it out now those types of machines are the original machines that first came out way back in like the 30s or maybe the 40s um, but that type of machine where you pull the door open you can pull out a full meal in some of like now it's the, like a tv dinner um, but and then you put it in the microwave and you got your hot food 
but you can also use those for um, you know nice sandwiches or fresh fruit or if you want to do like yogurt and granola with some fruit or whatever um, like I said you can also put pop in there so because it's refrigerated so but the only thing you have to think about when doing fresh food is here in Canada you can't just make the food at your house and then go fill it up you have to have a professional health department certified kitchen um, you also have to provide uh, ingredients list stickers, you know, nutritional facts, that kind of stuff. Uh, these are just the type of things. Um, like for example, if you see if you see like a, a, a pop here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got the nutrition facts on there. It's got the ingredients and that kind of stuff. Um, when dealing with fresh food, you got to think about shelf life. Now, if you walk up to a vending machine, you see a banana there, and it's starting to go brown majority of the time you're not going to buy it because you're like oh it's not good but technically it's it's just it's actually better that way because it's more ripe but people just they, they look at it oh it's brown it's bad and then they move on so now you have to you, you have to you know uh, eat the cost of that because <laughs> literally uh, because no one's going to buy it so it's even with the, the sandwiches too um, and, but those machines are good you can put in a can of like ravioli with the pull top you know if, if they have if they bring a plate or a bowl with them they put it in there throw it in the microwave um, and it's a nice hot meal but they also have those uh, the same type of things where you can just put the whole thing it's like a paper cup uh, a paper in a, in a wax kind of uh, container where you put the whole thing in and it heat it up so it, it, it is a good option but you got to consider if you're gonna do fresh food like fruits and vegetables and sandwiches the shelf life um, you know, best before dates, you got to keep up on that. Sandwiches are good for maybe three days, depending on what it is, what's in it, uh, according to the health department with shelf life and that kind of thing. So it's one thing to consider. It is a good option because your price points for the sandwiches are a lot more than a bag of chips. So, but, you know, do your homework. Again, do your homework, do your research. Does your market uh, that you're going to have it in, is it a hospital or a very large uh, facility, factory, that kind of thing? But, you know, keep that in mind when, if you're deciding to pick this type of machine, you know, what your options are and what you have to go through to be able to do that kind of thing with the, with the professional kitchen, all the, the labeling for the ingredients, the nutrition list, that kind of stuff. So, again, do your homework. Uh, it is a good option, but there's a lot more involved in that type of machine. And finally, the last type of machine which is great for smaller businesses because you don't have to get the full pop, full snack, is a combo machine. Now I have lots of combo machines and they do great because you have the option of having pop, chips, uh, chocolate bars, and they work great for um, smaller locations, maybe like 75 and under, that it doesn't um, require uh, a full machine for both because you have, you have to keep in mind that a combo machine is just one unit now you can get four four wide or five wide meaning you know four options across um, now the machines that I have there's like two two choices for two rows for chips um, two rows for snacks and then eight choices of beverages whether it be you know, pop juice water um, majority of those combo machines are just cans. Um, there are some out there that offer bottles as well, but the ones I have, I just use cans again. I just like cans. So, um, but again, like the full line uh, snack machines, there's motors and coils and all different components that you have to consider when you're looking into buying a combo machine because one, there's a compressor with that as well. And there's also the motors with all the all the different options you have. So, if you're buying used, have them go through it all, test it out. You know, test the coin max, test the test the bill readers, um, but test doing all the tests. Tell them to plug it in the day before, so when you get there, you can feel it, see if it's cold. I have uh, a biotherm, and you can check the uh, check the temperature of the drinks of the machine to see if it's cold and it works great for me, I always carry it with me. You can also just check it with your hand and feel it. If it feels cold, then it's pretty cold, but um, if you're using the other machine with sandwiches, um, 
this is very important to have is the temperature because those food have to be out of the danger zone. That's where all the bacteria starts to grow. So you want to keep your hot food hot and your cold food cold and nothing in between because you can make people sick and then you're in deep trouble. But anyways, uh, I hope this, uh, this little video helped you out in, in deciding on which vending machine to uh, choose, what suits your needs. And if you have any further questions, please comment down below and I'll help you along the way as best I can. But my name is CJ from the Great White North, York Region, Vending Solutions. We'll see you soon.